Welcome to my lecture online. Just like anything else in life, there are certain ways to do it better than other ways. Certain techniques that just are better, more efficient, quicker, and more secure. Now, if you're going to be taking a test, there are certain things that absolutely help you take that test better, and you're more likely to get the answers correct. So what do we do? You're inside the classroom, you're inside the building, inside the big room with everybody else, and you're given the test. What do we do? Well, first of all, you need to learn to relax. Relaxation is really big. If you go in and you have all kinds of fears and you're nervous, you're not going to do as well. You need to learn to relax, and relaxation comes with the security that you know you're prepared. Obviously, if you didn't get a chance to prepare, then yes, you're going to be more nervous because you're not so sure you're going to do well. But if you did a lot of the work up front, you did a lot of memorization, a lot of practice, you did the problems over and over and over again, you became really familiar with the material, you could walk into the test knowing that this is just kind of like another practice test. You will do well because you did well in your practice test and you know the material. So relaxation is not something you just purely make yourself do, it's part of being prepared and then, of course, yes, if you have the tendency of being nervous in a test, just try to learn to relax. Learn some breathing exercises. Try this. When you're under pressure, you need to learn to simply relax and calm yourself down because you will perform a lot better in a more relaxed state. Secondly, read each question carefully. So many times, and I've done it myself, when I just rushed through the question, I didn't quite understand what exactly they were asking. I may have missed a key point in the question and I get it all wrong because I didn't read the question carefully. You can't rush through that part even though you're time constrained. You have to read it carefully to make sure you catch every piece of information and every piece of direction that you need in order to solve the question properly. So make sure you note what is given and what is asked and you know exactly what you're supposed to do based on the question. Thirdly, make a quick sketch of the problem. Get a visual perspective. Our brains are not as good at reading a text and then knowing what to do. If we see a picture, it makes a lot more sense. That's why a lot of traffic signals are simply pictures, not text, because we can look at a picture and know exactly what to do. When we need to read a test, we need to make that translation in our brain. Same with a test problem or a test question. If you translate it into a quick picture, you can look at the picture and have much better ideas of how to solve it, so it does help. Fourthly, Skip a problem if the solution doesn't come to you right away. I've seen students that spend the, half the test time on the very first problem because they think if they can't solve that problem, they can't solve any other problems. But that's not the case. It may just be that the first problem of the test is material you just forgot or you're just not as familiar with. Just simply skip it and move on to the next one. You may have to skip to the third or the fourth one until you find one you right away connect it with and you feel comfortable with and then you can go ahead and do that. There's two reasons for that. First of all, you can spend a lot of time on a problem and not get it right, and then you have so much less time for the rest of the test. Or also, secondly, your brain works better if you get some momentum going. If you get one test problem right, and then you get the next one right, the next one right, even though it's maybe number three, number six, and number eight, you get that momentum, you get into the groove, and now you can go back after you've done all the so-called easier ones, or the ones you're familiar with, now you can go back and start working on the harder ones. And even though you didn't know what to do when you read it the first time, now that you have some momentum going, you might know how to do that one instead. So I always recommend just quickly skip over one when you look at it and go, oh, I'm not sure what to do here, just move to the next one. Start knocking out the ones you know first, and then go back to the more challenging ones. And then, of course, that way at least you spend enough time on the ones you knew how to do and get those problems right. Number five, yeah, get the momentum going, do the easy problems first. Don't sit there and spend a lot of time on the ones you're struggling with. And then number six here, if you need to guess, like you're taking a multiple choice test, and let's say there's four possible answers, if you can eliminate one or two where you say it can not be this one because, and there's only two left you're not sure about and you're not quite sure how to solve the problem, if you're purely guessing, I'd rather guess one out of two than one out of three or one out of four. At least I have more of a chance to getting those right. And then you follow, you want to follow these particular steps while you're doing the test, while you're working out the problems. For each problem, identify the principle. Recognize the principle at stake here in the problem. 
list the relevant equations, write down the equations you're going to need to solve that problem so you can look at the equation, move things around. Thirdly, identify what is asked. Make sure you're crystal clear on the item that they're asking. I've seen students answer the question where they're calculating the force instead of the electric field because they weren't looking at the question carefully. So you want to make sure you know exactly what they're asking for. Draw a quick diagram, make sure you get that visual on it so you're more likely to come up with a good technique of how to solve it. Then devise a solution strategy. You may say, well, first I'm going to find the acceleration, and then I'm going to find the force, and then I'm going to find the tension. Just kind of see how you're going to get through the problem. Devise this technique, the strategy of how to solve it. Then compute the solution, and at the end, if there's time left, make sure you check the answer. Sometimes you can check the answer by doing it in a different way. Sometimes you can check the answer by doing the problem over again. Or sometimes you can do a quick quick uh, estimate of, of rough estimate of estimation where you just kind of throw a few numbers together and go, okay, it's got to be somewhere between 5 and 10. And if your answer is 100, then you realize, ooh, I'm probably not correct and I probably need to do this one over again. So those are the things that you should be doing during the test. Relax, work through it, and make sure you follow these general guidelines. Of course, everybody works things a little bit differently, but I'm sure that over the years that I've seen students struggle with tests and have difficulty with them with those tests when they start following these kind of instructions they tend to do a lot better so i recommend that at least you consider these so that you might do well on the test at hand and that is how it's done you know telling people to relax or <laughs> don't be nervous when they're nervous is useless yes you're right most people especially in front of a very important test are going to be nervous there's no question but you can put yourself in a more relaxed state and you can practice that when you're very nervous you can try to practice some breathing exercise some relaxation try to force yourself in a more relaxed state it does help and it does take a little bit of learning how to do that but i definitely some people can learn how to do it through meditation or through other techniques it's not a bad yeah, idea to do that There's a really good point. So one of the ways in which you can get over that nervousness is when you start razor sharpening, sharp focusing on the test. Uh, that's a really good suggestion my wife just gave me there. Uh, yes, if you really begin to focus and you drown out all the other distractions around you and you just begin to focus, your body will just kind of get in and settle in and the nervousness will go away. If you really start focusing, that's another way of of to try to cope with it but definitely it's something not to forget about it's something that we all have to deal with nervousness is part of life whenever you're challenged with something especially a very difficult test like that